In the screencast for 10b, Combining Probabilities, we will be looking at three topics. The first, independent or dependent events. The second, overlapping or non-overlapping events. And then in a separate screencast, 10b Part 2, the at least rule. We'll start off talking about the idea of independent or dependent events because they affect how you compute the probability of multiple events. Remember, any time you are trying to find the probability of a multiple event, more than one thing happening, you multiply. And that's exactly what we have here. We want to know, is the probability of the next four births at a hospital being boys an independent or dependent event? If it is a dependent event, then the outcome of the first birth affects the outcome of the second birth. And we know that that actually does not happen. Whether a boy or a girl is born in the second birth really has no dependence upon what happened in the birth that came before that event. So. Um, that means that for our particular example, we are looking at independent events. Now that we know that this is an independent event, we are going to find the probability that this will occur. We are looking at the probability of there being four boys in separate births. So that means that we're going to be looking at the probability of the first birth times the probability of the second birth times the probability of the third birth times the probability of the fourth birth. Since there are two possible outcomes, a boy or a girl, and we are looking for a boy, the probability that the first birth will be a boy is one half. Because these are independent events, we forget about the first birth when we're computing the second birth. In this particular case, the probability that the second birth will be a boy also would be one half. And the same thing happens for the third and the fourth birth. To find the probability that all four will be boys, we need to multiply one half times one half times one half times one half, or one half raised to the fourth power. That gives us 1 16th or 6 and a quarter percent if we change that to a decimal and then move the decimal point over two places. Just to show you the difference between an independent and a dependent event, I'm going to change gears here a little bit for the purpose of illustration. Let's say we were looking at a deck of cards. Suppose we were looking at the probability of pulling a queen and then another queen, which means we're going to be pulling two cards from the deck, one after another. There was no replacement. That means I would be pulling a card, and let's assume since the game is going to continue that I pulled a queen, and then that card is put aside. So now when I pull the second card, there is one less in the deck. To set that up in our problem, that means that for the first pull in the complete deck of cards, there were four queens that would allow me to continue in the game out of 52 cards. Again, if the game is going to continue, let's suppose that I pulled a queen. Well, now that means there are only three queens left in the deck. And since one of the cards has been put aside, there are only 51 possible outcomes. That's an example of a dependent event. If I compute that probability, I have 12 divided by 52 times 51, which gives me a probability of 0 0.0045 approximately, which when changed to a percent, would be less than half a percent. Not a great chance of this happening. But that's an example and a comparison between independent and dependent events. Moving on to our second problem in screencast 10b, 
The question asks, is the probability of drawing a face card or a heart an overlapping or non-overlapping event? Find the probability that this will occur. Overlapping or non-overlapping has to do with the characteristics of the items that we're considering in the probability problem. For this to be an overlapping event, there would need to be face cards that are also hearts. If it were a non-overlapping event, that means that all of the face cards would not be hearts or vice versa. Now, if you consider a standard deck of cards, you know that there are some hearts that are face cards. So this definitely is an overlapping event. With that in mind, we have to remember when we find the probability of drawing a face card or a heart that we must not double count. The first thing that we're going to do is to figure out individually what is the probability of each one of these two things happening. I know that there are three face cards, Jack, King, and Queen, for each suit, and we have four suits. So that means there are 12 face cards out of 52 cards. I also know that there are four suits in a standard deck of cards, and 13 of those are hearts. I win this particular game by pulling either a face card or a heart out of the deck of cards. In the case of or situations, we add the individual probabilities. However, because it's an overlapping event, we have to figure out how many cards would be counted twice if we didn't make some adjustment. Those would be the king, the queen, and the jack of hearts, three cards that would be double counted. So we want to subtract off the double counting so that they're only counted once and subtract them from that sum. Now we end up with 12 plus 13, which is 25, minus 3, which is 22, over 52. That is the probability of pulling a face card or a heart. If you wish to turn this into a percent or a decimal, then take 22, divide it by 52. The decimal is 400. 23 thousandths. If we move the decimal point over by multiplying by 100, we end up with 42.3 percent. To recap, be very careful that when you're dealing with an overlapping event that you subtract off the items with the double characteristics so that they are not counted twice. Remember that we Without doing that, we would have those three cards as part of this 12 and as part of that 13. So that's why we need this adjustment. Thank you for viewing this webcast.